So let's start with potential energy. So there are two types of potential energy, right? Gravitational potential energy and uh, elastic potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is the energy stored in an object as a result of its vertical positions or its height. Uh, for example, if you have an object here, okay, and you lift this object to a higher position, you put it here, uh, then potential energy will be stored inside this object. So potential energy is due to the vertical positions of an object. If you change the vertical height of an object, then the potential energy will change. If you move it to a higher level, it will gain potential energy. And if you move it from a higher place to a lower place, then it will lose potential energy. Okay, so potential energy uh, or gravitational potential energy is due to the vertical positions or vertical height. Higher positions, higher uh, gravitational potential energy, the lower the positions, the lower the gravitational potential energy. And the energy is stored as the result of the gravitational attractions of the Earth, of, uh, for, of the object. So it's due to the gravitational attractions. If there is no gravitational attractions, then uh, no matter where you put the object, there's no uh, potential energy change. Okay. And uh, potential energy is given by the formula uh, PE equal to MGH. Uh, PE is the potential energy. Sometime, sometimes uh, potential energy is denoted by the symbol E sub P. Uh, e sub P. Just now uh, we learned that the potential energy is the, uh, the kinetic energy is denoted by the symbol E sub K, right? Okay. E sub K is uh, kinetic energy. Okay. And uh, E sub P, E sub P is uh, potential energy. So we call this E sub P is because this is a subscript, eh? subscript. So E subscript P. So we call this E sub P. Eh? So this E subscript K. So the small letter here is called a subscript. Eh? Uh, so this is called E sub P. This is called E sub K. So sometimes we use this uh, E sub P and E sub K. Eh? to denote the potential energy or uh, kinetic energy. And sometimes we just straight away put PE yeah, to denote the potential energy. So it depends. Huh? Okay, some, some books use this and some books uh, use this. Elastic potential energy. Now, elastic potential energy is the energy stored in elastic material as the result of the stretchings or uh, compressings of that object. Huh? For example, spring. Elastic potential energy is the energy uh, stored in elastic object. Huh? Okay, spring, you stretch it, then there will have uh, this uh, potential energy store inside. And if you compress it, then there is a potential energy store inside. Okay, so the energy store due to the stretching or compressing. And uh, the amount of potential energy store, okay, uh, is given by the formula PE equal to half Fx. Uh, but as I told you just now, I'm going to discuss this in next lessons. Uh, okay, not here. Next lessons, we will discuss the elasticity and then I'm going to discuss the, the elastic potentials energy with you. Okay, so now just you just need to know that there are two types of uh, potential energy, the gravitational potential energy and uh, the elastic potential energy. Okay, now let's see this example. A student of mass 50 kg runs up a staircase of height 3 meter. Find the potential energy possessed by the students when he is at the top of the staircase. Okay, so do you still remember what's the formula for potential energy? Potential energy E sub P is equal to mg h. Okay, so from this um, from these questions, we know that the mass uh, the mass of the student is fifty kg. So m equal to fifty kg. And he run up the staircase of height three meter. Okay, now you see here uh, uh, the staircase is something like this, right? Okay, and the height is three meter. Okay, uh, maybe this distance it might be uh, five meters or what? Okay, uh, okay. Now the h, uh, the h is the vertical height. It's not this distance. Uh. It's not this distance. Okay, it's not the distance traveled by the object. It's the vertical height. Of the object, uh, three meters. Okay, so uh, the h, uh, the height, is three meters. Uh, it's not five meters. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, 
And how about G? G, okay. Now the G is the gravitational field strength. Okay, the G, yeah. The G is the gravitational field strength. Okay, now in SPM, in SPMs, okay, we always assume that the gravitational field strength is equal to 10. Eh? 10. Uh, the unit is Newton per kg, okay. Um, if the object is moving, for the moving object, okay, uh, the G can also be the gravitational accelerations. Uh, the value is still the same, it's 10, okay, but then the units might be a little bit different. So it's ms to the power of uh, negative 2, eh? okay. This is uh, gravitational acceleration and this is gravitational field strength. For calculations, they are totally the same. There's no difference, okay? The value is the same. But uh, gravitational field strength is for object which is not moving and gravitational acceleration is uh, for object which is moving, okay? That's on the difference between these two G, yeah? okay? Uh, so we have our M, G, and H, right? So we can uh, plug in this M, G, H into the equations here. Uh, the m is equal to 50, g equal to 10, and the h equal to 3, right? Okay, so this is equal to 1,500 Joule. So that's how easy it is, okay? As long as you can remember the formula, okay? List down all the information given, plug it into the equations, then you get an answer.